this webinar we will be for focusing on uh, can and uh, how do we use can on python and how do we use can uh, test uh, i mean can for using robo framework that will be the whole idea to start with but before we go to uh, just considering the background of the audience uh, let uh, let me just spend a few moments to uh, go through why we need can what is this whole framework about and why we know why we do this webinar uh, to start with let me start with an electronic control unit see uh, in the early 1990s to 1995 if you looked at a fiat car you know how difficult it will be to turn on the turn around the steering correct uh, but today you can turn a volvo bus with just one thumb it's all because of the electronic control units and today any automobile uh, car, whether it's a truck it's a bike or it's a car it has around good number of issues a modern car has around 70 issues a bike like royal enfield has somewhere between 15 to 22 issues so there's a quite a lot of uh, issues that are being uh, associated with any automobile uh, uh, in so what is the purpose of the ecu uh, if you look at uh, how a ecu works uh, ecu primarily has uh, three components uh, i would call it as an ecu architecture it may have three components one is a sensor uh, from where it collects data and then there is the ecu actually which actually takes it's a microcontroller primarily a microcontroller with a code on it and uh, it processes the data and there is an actuator the actuator is the fellow uh, which actually takes the decision i mean the ecu is actually the guy which takes the decision and he pushes the information to the actuator and the actuator does the manual work or the mechanical work so that's how usually an ecu work and since uh, i've talked about uh, a modern car having around 70 ecus uh, some of these ecus can work independently but most of the ecus need data from other ecus like say for example a famous example is like say when a crash is detected and uh, uh, the airbag opens up that's an ecu which is doing the work but uh, for the airbag ecu to know that there is a crash detected it requires data from other ecus to be popped on and it needs to be done at milliseconds because this decision is a very critical data and the day and the airbag has to be pushed out uh, or opened in less than 5 milliseconds or something like that just giving a remember so the whole idea is ecus don't work independently they need to establish communication between them and that is the reason why uh, we have gone for can a can is a, a protocol a protocol which primarily establishes effective communication between the ecus so Uh, all right so as i said uh, can is a protocol and when you mean by a protocol all of us are computer science engineers so when we mean protocol protocol is nothing but a set of rules right so can is a multi master serial bus standard uh, so before can was uh, brought into practice by bosch uh, there were uh, master slave methodologies that were available that is one ecu will be acting as a master or uh, and the other fellows will be acting as a slave but can is a multi master serial bus standard where all the ecus can have the ability to work as a master that's the whole idea ecus are also can also be uh, termed as nodes during the further document so i'm just putting that as a reference so as i mentioned two or more uh, ecus for for them to effectively communicate we use a can network and uh, Uh, a can network can be connected to any type of ecu it can be a brake ecu or it can be an engine ecu both of them have different complexity of functions but still can will be an effective communication tool between these ecus so this is how a can bus looks like uh, so if you look at the uh, uh, communication bus the mode of communication is a can bus uh, so it's not a uh, one to one communication it's one to one or many to one communication both these things are possible in a can bus and uh, uh, there are two lines one is a high line and there's a, one, a low line uh, and these are like say uh, three can nodes can be considered as three ecus so all these ecus are typically connected to the can bus so in today's uh, uh, webinar we will be talking about how we will be building a can node which is primarily a bus using python we will be talking about how we are going to configure a can bus that we see on the line the horizontal line we will also see how these 
communications are effectively established are they effectively established so primarily our focus today is going to be on testing so we are going to verify and validate whether effective communication is established between the can nodes or between the ecus that's the whole objective so as i said we'll be focusing on three things we'll be focusing on how to configure a node how to configure a bus and we'll also see how effective communication is established between the bus and the node and etc yeah so we'll focus on testing today all right so before we uh, go to uh, uh, how we configure the bus and how we configure the can node it is very important to understand the can uh, protocol format uh, this is a typical uh, can uh, protocol format which is available in wikipedia uh, so uh, if you look at it uh, I, i'll go through one uh, after the other uh, the left corner you will find the start of the frame the protocol from it the, it's a one bit frame and uh, the one bit frame actually denotes the start of uh, transmission it's a one bit frame the next uh, 11 bits is a 11 bit identifier and uh, the 11 bit identifier is used primarily to configure or set the priority for the message it serves two purposes one it also one it serves it sets the priority two it also acts as an identifier from which ecu it is coming or from which node it is going to come this where is the origin of this or what is the source of this uh, message so that's the identifier field the next fellow which is uh, the blue uh, line is a one bit uh, field uh, it's called the remote transmission request uh, so uh, the transmission request is sent uh, i mean is set as one if it is i'm sorry uh, is set as zero if it's a data frame and it is set as one uh, if it's a, a remote request frame so uh, an ecu is primarily will collect data and it will keep transmitting data that's the primary job of an ecu as and when it is uh, transmitting a data frame uh, the remote rtr request will be zero it's because it's a data frame sometimes an ecu may also have to request data from other ecus so when it is sending a request data to other ecus to fetch a particular data from that particular ecu in that uh, case this uh, remote uh, transmission request is set as one all right so in all other cases it will be set as zero then the next is an uh, identifier uh, extension um, which primarily tells uh, which is usually zero for a base format and uh, one for an extended format uh, the idea is uh, can has two types of frame format one is uh, the normal frame format which you see it on the screen there's another one which is an extra uh, extended frame format can frame format which has extra uh, bits of uh, bytes of data uh, it can send extra bytes of data but we are not going to talk about extended can frame today so i limit our scope only to uh, normal can frames and uh, so if you are talking about a normal can frame or a basic can frame this uh, ide will be set as zero and then there is a reserved bit one bit uh, which is reserved for future uh, uses so let's, let's go to the next one then you go to the next uh, which is the dlc uh, code so the dlc code actually tells you what is the length of the data that is being set uh, the red color uh, data field tells you the length of the data so you find that 8 byte of data can be transmitted so to to indicate 8 you need at least 4 bits correct in decimal you need at least 4 bits to uh, indicate 8 that is why the data length code is given as 4 uh, so if all the if the data length code is say 1111 it means that the length of the by, uh, data is going to be 8 bytes uh, and uh, if it is say 1 bit then the only it will be like 0001 so in that case it will be the length of the frame will be like so that's a uh, uh, that's the work of the dlc and as i said the data length uh, the date the amount of data that can be transmitted in one frame of a can signal is around 8 bytes is sorry not around it's 8 bytes that's the maximum size it can send the rest of it if you look at it you have a crc it's a cyclic redundancy check primarily to identify whether uh, uh, you, uh, you 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 are going to uh, is the message received intact or is there any error 
and then we have an acknowledgement slot and we finally have an end of frame uh, but uh, i would like to focus on three specific uh, slots here because if you look at it most of the can uh, uh, frame format will require uh, will remain standard let's say the start of the frame will always be one uh, the identifier extension uh, which is uh, today we are going to talk about is uh, only base frame format so it is always set as one and if you look at uh, uh, the other thing the rtr uh, the remote transmission request most of it we are going to send is going to be dominant which is all of that are going to be data frames so again that is sent so the only three parameters which are important today is the identifier which will keep changing the second one is the data length code which will be the length of the data and the data itself so these are the three parameters that we are going to play around with today the rest of it is going to remain the same so i'll repeat that uh, the three parameters that we will be playing around is one identifier two data length code and the third is the actual data in most of the other cases you know that uh, we can see that the rest of the frame format will re will remain similar even in real uh, practical purposes for practical purposes all right